Welcome to a special edition of GarageBand and Beyond. This is going to be a short little series based on the three top people from my four track contest. Uh, so today we're going to be working on the song that Jesse Buckner sent in. If any of you watched the last video that came out, the you know announcement of the winner, this was one of the songs and it goes like this. It's sort of like a cool rock song. Super cool song. Once again, Jesse, I really dig your song. So uh, there are a few things that I noticed right away. And one of them, I'm going to uh, actually just call up my other camera here on my phone. And I want to show you guys something that I noticed over here on my little pre-Sonus uh, monitor station right here. So let me just push play. And I want you to watch those meters right there. They don't move at all, right? I mean, I turn it on. And it is absolutely positively pegged on the red. Okay, so that number one tells me that there is <clears throat> most likely a, well, most definitely a lack of dynamic range that most likely happened in the mastering stage. And we will talk about that as we get there. The other thing, Jesse, just so you know, the first thing I did notice was the fact that you have all of your monitoring buttons selected not all of them but the vast majority of them so if you ever have issues with GarageBand running slowly this is one of those things leaving the input monitoring on takes up brain power from your computer more or less right so it's going to slow it down so I'm just going to click and swipe all the way down and they're all going to go off now Another thing that I personally like to do is get rid of things that I don't need, okay, when I'm in the mixing stage of this. So I'm going to come up here to the track pull down menu. I'm going to go to configure track header, and I'm actually going to turn off the input monitoring just because I don't need it. I don't need the track lock. All these things that are unselected, I don't need. Mute and solo, I will definitely need for uh, mixing, okay? So that's that. We got rid of that. Now, uh, let's start. Jesse with your electric guitar tone because I did go through these a little bit and uh, look okay so here we can see that we have yet another uh, a tone right we got a guitar tone here this is the electric guitar let me just solo this out for us all right um, and as I look at this waveform I don't see a ton of dynamic range right so then I go into your plugins to see what you're using and I notice that there's a compressor on. Well, okay, so you don't always need to have a compressor on. And this is for everybody. Jesse, this is not just you. I know that you're sort of a new person to the recording world. Uh, so I will say this about, you know, if you're new to recording, uh, good on you because these signals are really good and strong and I believe they're sitting in the range that I like. Yep, they're like right between, you know, pegging out at 50 on this one. Uh, this looks about the same and the vocals are a little bit hot, but not not so bad, right? Nothing's peaking. So really good work on your gain structure at the very beginning of the process, which is recording, right? Um, but let's go back to this guitar because I think this is kind of interesting what you did. Um, and I would not have done this, okay? So let me just turn off all these plugins. Actually, let's start and then I'll turn all the plugins off and we will listen to the raw recorded tone. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure how you recorded this. I would assume from the sound of it that this is a direct sound out of your Supro. Uh, looks like a Supro 112, right? So awesome amp, right? When you turn the amp designer on, and let me just do this, it changes the tone dramatically. I mean, really, really, really dramatically. 
I personally really like this uh, Supro tone. So I think what I'm going to do is keep it just totally dry. Uh, I don't think it needs to be compressed. I don't think it needs the amp designer. I think this tone is really cool and raw all by itself. You have a delay, you're recording effects. Um, so I would stick with those, okay? So let's uh, look at how much it's passing because maybe there is a, well, maybe I would use the gain plugin instead of the compressor. Let's look at how much the signal is passing over the volume ball here in GarageBand, okay? A lot. Okay, so, I mean, this is, you know, just the way I've been mixing lately, so I'm gonna try to bring that down, and I'm gonna use the gain plugin. Uh, now, I've been mixing, uh, so it's, it's already called up, but just so you don't, just so you do know, it's under the utility right there, and we'll turn it on gain, okay? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna slowly bring this gain control down until I find that it's not passing this ball very much, okay? So let's just push play. I like that, okay, so negative 6.3. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now let's take a listen to the drummer. Uh, I think I'm gonna mute everything and we'll leave this on. And let's take a look at the drums. Okay, so. <laughs> Let's take a look and a listen here. Okay, so stereo spread on the drums, nah, not a good idea in general. I don't think it really needs it. Okay, I'm okay with these drum sounds. Okay, so they are hitting kind of hard on this signal here. So what I always do, and I have made many videos about this, is I'm actually gonna bring this down to negative five dB. Uh, and let's just, yeah, put it right there, negative five. Okay, oh my gosh, I can't get it. Let's just type it in, you guys, negative five, okay. So negative five, and we're looking good there, and we're looking good here, okay. One of the things you guys should always, one of the things you guys should always be looking at while you're mixing any song is this main meter up here, okay? Uh, just keep a good eye on it and make sure you are never, ever going, you know, much past this ball, definitely never into the red. If you are, don't simply turn this down. Don't, you know, you need to go back in and adjust the mix, okay? Um, you need to bring everything down. So in, uh, in that respect, in that regard, let's look at these drums again and look at how much it's passing the ball here. A lot, right? So I'm gonna come into the compressor and I'm gonna turn it down. All right, we look good. And look at, you know, even on that high uh, snare hit right there, we get a little bit peaky there, but I don't think it actually hit a pe uh, the red. I can live with that, okay? Because what I would do now, I would probably close the threshold down a tiny bit. So let's just do that to like 30, 60 B. Let's just try to make sure we're grabbing those things. Yeah, I can live with that. And maybe I'll bring the ratio up a tiny bit. Three to one's a lot. Not a lot, but uh, a good number. Okay, all right. So now, I mean, here, me in my studio, I actually have to come over to my knob over here and turn it up. And let's see. All right, good. So now I can hear everything. Okay. So basically at this point, what I want to do is go around and sort of adjust all the gain structure on all of these channels, okay? So let's get into the bass now, okay? So here's the bass. We'll mute this guy. Whoa, loud. Okay, so let's turn that way down. So we got the same issue of it. Oh my gosh, you have stereo spread on this too. We're going to turn that off. Uh, come up to the bass amp. What are we looking at here? Okay. Okay, so this bass signal, I will say, is a little bit hot. I wanna turn all of this off and let's hit, listen to this raw.
That's interesting. Now, so exactly where is this distortion coming from? It should not be this. Oh, it is. Okay, so you're using the clip distortion. All right, I, I'm down with that. You can use that. <laughs> uh, you have it dialed in nicely. I like the tone in general. I do think it's recorded a little bit hot. As we get into here, you can see in the editor window that we're starting to pass over the 75%. And uh, which I'm looking at these numbers right here. Okay, so this is 100% and 25%. If you don't know, I like signals living somewhere between 25 and 75 being the peak point, but um, generally never higher than that. Now, it's okay, nothing distorted, uh, but it looks, you know, a little hot for my personal style of mixing. All right, so let's go back in and just turn it down from this. Uh, where's the master? Let's turn the master down and. And we're looking at the meter again and trying to not let the signal pass too much past the ball. Okay, so that looks good as far as, as, far as the signal is concerned. So now let's just turn it up. I'm gonna come in here and do a couple little adjustments here. I personally, you know, if you're gonna distort this, I would like to hear a little bit more of that distortion. It looks like you're actually pulling some of it out here. Maybe not much. Um, so let's just come in. That sounds good, I think, all things considered. I'm doing this quickly. So in general, just so you guys know, for me personally, lately, what, the way I've been EQing is I've really been trying to do more additional EQ instead of subtractive EQ. I find that things sound a little bit more exciting when I'm really pushing things up, not pushing, but when I'm raising EQs instead of ducking things out and pulling tone away from the signal, I'd rather find the things that I am interested in hearing, right? The, the high end of this bass, for example. So I'm gonna actually try to turn it up and I'm, you know, happy with the way the low end sounds. And if, I, if you look at these controls down here, it seems, you know, you're pulling the EQ on the low end down and turning the high all the way up. So Jesse, it sounds like you and I kind of want to hear the same things, but this is the method that I would do it. Okay, so let's just do that. All right, I like that. Okay, so let's get back to this guitar. Actually, no, we have to get uh, some more signal gain. We got to get some gain stuff corrected here. Okay, <laughs> for example. Um, all right, so I'm gonna turn stereo spread off again. I, having looked at this, I'm going to, actually I'll leave the compressor on on this one. You have two EQs running and they, oh gosh, they're both doing pretty dramatic. <laughs> so this is funny, Jesse, just so you know, uh, here at the top EQ before the compressor, you're pulling high end out. After the compressor, you're putting a lot of it in. Um, so, you know, maybe what we would do is turn off one of these EQs and then do less in this EQ. Uh, but I think, again, you're running an amp designer that most likely is changing your tone dramatically. Yeah, I mean, Jesse, dude, that Supro tone is so good. Like, why would, I don't know why you'd mess with it. I personally really love that tone. All right, so let's uh, use the compressor now to, we're gonna close it down a little bit more. We're gonna close this threshold down. Ratio four to one looks good. So let's just, um, let's look at it in terms of its output. So I'm gonna move this guy right here. Come on, come on. Wow.
I can live with this. I mean, I'm turning the gain down to negative 20 dB because of the, the hotness of the signal. Um, all right, I think I can live with that though. All right, so this is the, the sum the summary <laughs> for the four track concert or contest. We don't need to listen to that. Okay, so now let's listen to these guys together, the band together, and let's try to get a little mix going here. Uh, let's do that again. Let's do this. Okay, so one thing I would do, uh, now that the stereo spreader is turned off, I would dedicate these two guitars to the left or the right. So I'm gonna say, let's put the rhythm -y guitar on the right side, and let's just do around here. And let's put the slide guitar equally on the other side. Let's check this out. I have forgotten something very, very important. I have completely forgotten the fact that he has all this stuff on in the master channel. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, guys, <clears throat> whoops. Okay, so let's turn all of these off. All of the stuff in the master channel needs to be turned off. Okay, let's listen how dramatically different it sounds now. Hugely different. Oh, and you know what? Let's turn this automation off so I can actually control that. All right, so what you guys should all understand, what I'm listening for at this point is, where are the drums? I don't really want to turn these drums up at all. I'm going to start mixing around this drum volume. Um, so I'm going to switch monitors, and give me a second. You're just going to watch and listen and uh, see what I do. Right, because like when the drums come in, we want it to be like, boom, right? So we want them to be pretty loud comparatively. Let's just, let's start from where the drums are. Okay, let's try that again from the top. Oh, wow, look at how much that compressor was turned up. Uh, uh, what are we changing here? Oh, interesting. Okay. If you ever wonder what these knobs do, like the compression knob, you can open the plugin up, and when you turn it, you'll see the parameters moving. Um, so yeah, that thing was getting totally crushed out, which I wouldn't do. We're gonna have to change, we're gonna have to take a look at the gain structure again. Oh my gosh, yeah. Do you hear how much more the kick is coming out and how that snare doesn't have that like overly squashed sound now? Um, it's just like the just releasing the compressor a little bit. You know, we, we don't want to crush dynamic range, guys. Don't want to over compress things because that's what you're doing. So when I say dynamic range, I'm talking about the, you know, the, the low volume stuff and the high volume stuff in any given track, right? 
Uh, you want to be able to hear all of it. And, and if you want it to be quieter, you should let it be quieter. If you are squishing the shit out of it with a compressor, it's never going to like, you're not going to get that dynamic range. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right. So let's take a look at these vocals. I was totally down with your vocal tone. Uh, let's just turn these guys down. Automation off. And let's take a listen here. I really like your vocal tone, so let's uh, let's just address one of them. Again, turning the spreader off. Um, Jesse, if you want that big wide sound, we will discuss that a little bit at the end. Um, but in general, I mean, you know, think about this kind of song. To me personally, this is like, a, you know, old school rocker. They didn't have that big wide spreading thing back in the day. And it doesn't, to me, doesn't sound appropriate for like a cool old school, you know, like garage band rock song. Um, not garage band, the recording program, an actual band that plays and rehearses in a garage. You know what I mean? <laughs> like step through the in the back, red. She said okay, so we got to... Uh, Discuss. Let's look at what this compressor is doing. So again, I'm I'm just working the gain here to get this not passing the uh, ball. Okay, so now we can't hear this, but it's in the right place, uh, level-wise. Okay, so let me, um, so you got this second vocal. One of my favorite tricks, and I haven't tried it on here yet, so let's see if it works. You do have the limiter going. Hmm, interesting. I'm gonna turn that limiter off, I think. Yeah, okay. The, it it does not sound uh doesn't sound nearly as squished without that. Or with the what do you call that? Limiter off. Okay. So, uh let's see where we are here. Okay, so let uh, let's do my little backup vocal trick here. So, we're going to go to modulation. We're going to look for the chorus, and this is my favorite thing to do. I go mega wide chorus uh for backup vocals. So, here's what I'm going to do. Let's listen to this now. So now, Jesse, uh, or anybody watching at this point, um, what you're going to hear is that backup vocal being spread out, but by the chorus effect, instead of the spreader, the stereo spreader, which I personally don't really like because it does not give you enough information to do this particular kind of thing uh, accurately. If you can't, uh, just trust me, that spreader thing is more headache than it's worth. So... Uh, Okay, so let's dump this reverb off. Reverb, uh, all the reverb is off. Let's try that again. Okay, so maybe that's too much chorus. So let's go back and uh, let's just say vocal backup. Let's see what that one sounds like. Okay, I like that better. And it's still spilling out because of the chorus effect, right? Spilling to the left and right. Right. Okay, so now let's dial some of your reverb back in. Let's look at the EQ, or not the EQ, let's look at the effects in the main output here. Uh, these are your master bus stuff. Uh, okay, so... I'm going to say this is a little on the bright side, and I might actually make it a little bit longer. Like 
Uh huh. Okay. She said there's no denying. That's why we need the violence. Okay. All right. I think we're getting somewhere. I want to go back to this lead vocal. And let's look for a delay. Good. You do have a delay on here, a quarter note delay. Okay. I am going to go more for slap back kind of thing. So let's look for a 16th note slap. Yep. All right. So this is the lead vocal sound. Let's just listen to this. A space to build the fire. Lock step, put the hammer back. That's right. Little voices in the right. So Okay, I think we're getting close. How long is this video so far? <laughs> oh my gosh, 26 minutes. Okay, so, like I said, special edition. Okay, so clearly we have an issue here. The toms are not loud enough at the top, uh, and this kick is really low. Oh, I think I got to do this again. I'm going to zero all these guys out here and let's take a look uh, at that gain structure on the kick or in the drums again. Yeah, I could definitely turn that up a couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? Okay, cool. All right, now I can, you know, now that I have this set right, I can actually change these knobs down here and have it do something beneficial. So let's go back to that intro because we want more toms. Get a little more of that cymbal crash in the top. <laughs> I was trying something. I just wanted to try something. Uh, an effect would be cool on that vocal. What am I hearing? Oh, the vibe might be the right thing here. Let's try this. I mean, it's it's just a decision, <laughs> in effect. Um, <clears throat> I like you know those sort of like Jimi Hendrixy effects on a song like this, especially for a vocal, just to give it a little bit of color, something different to listen to. OK, 
Okay, so here we are, right? Now we're getting very close to being done with this little mix, right? Um, so what you should be always looking at is this meter up here, and I'm just gonna push play and look at how little I'm going over. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this EQ back on, and Jesse, let's take a look at what you did. This is the lead, or the uh, rhythm guitar part. Yes, Jesse, that Supro sounds so cool. I don't know why you wanted to bury that. You're lucky to have that thing. All right, let's bring these drums up a little bit in their EQ. I think they sound a little bit muddy. So let's think, uh, let's go back to when I was talking about doing, you know, a dish, uh, like adding EQ instead of subtracting EQ, right? So we see a lot of subtractive stuff going on here. which is a lot where the, uh, you know, the heart of the kick drum lives. Like right, you know, where are we? 136, yeah, I mean, a lot of the kick drum lives in that range. Some of the low end of the snare lives there, so I probably wouldn't get rid of that. What I'm looking for when I look at these, uh, the analyzer, the, the graphic EQ coming up, is I'm looking for deficiencies in that frequency, right? So like right here, right in this area, I see like a not, not a lot of stuff coming through, so let's, push that up and see what it sounds like. Okay, so here I'll turn the I'll turn the EQ on and off. Now you can hear what it sounds like with and without it. You know, it's not a huge difference, but it's just enough, I think, just to sort of clarify the overall tone of that uh, drum kit. Let's go back to the top. Okay, so I think this is sounding pretty good. Uh, I am going to let you have a look though, again, at my meters over here. Uh, let me get that going. All right, so here we are. Nothing, look at that, it's awesome. This is what I want at the top. Right? Okay, so uh, if you were looking and paying attention, it's going up to about negative 6 dB, which is perfect, because now I would go on to the mastering 
process, okay? And let's take a look because Jesse, I know you had the auto normalize uh, box checked uh, via our emails. So everybody remember to uncheck that box, especially if you're not really, really great at uh, gain structure stuff. Um, but let's go back. Let's just see what happens when we turn your, well, let's, let's see what preset you were using here. Uh, Got to open up this master channel, show master track. Oh, okay, so you're using the straight up rock one. Okay, um, let's zero this out. So I'm gonna go back to pop and I'm gonna go back to rock. Uh, and so we have EQ, multipressor and the limiter. Let's just turn those off. Okay, so now when I'm, just so you all know, what I'm doing again here in the uh, mastering EQ, I'm basically more or less, not exactly, but trying to even out the, the waveform that I see coming through when the analyzer is turned on, right? Um, again, I'm looking for places where there's dips in the overall mix, and then I'm gonna try to boost them a little tiny bit. Not a lot, right? I'm not trying to make it really genuinely even, but I'd like it to have a better balance. Right. So if we turn this EQ off, or right, let's, well, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go and do one of my favorite. Let's go down to, uh, uh, let's try Smashed. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> All right. All right, so now that I've done all that work, let's come back over and take a look at my meters again, and we will see where they're living, okay? Perfect. I really, you know, again, I have these meters. It's an unfair advantage for me when I first uh, look at anybody's track, you know, when I get a song here in the, in the studio, I'm always looking at those meters to see like, wh where is, <laughs> how is the dynamic range in the overall mix? Now this mix actually has some dynamic range. Um, and I probably could, if I wanted to go in and turn on my auto normalize, I probably could do it 
now that I'm not driving the hell out of the entire mix, right? Um, there's a little bit of range. And so that auto normalize thing, when you get your gain structure just, just right, isn't a total waste of your time. Um, but you have to get it just right to be able to use that function properly. So I generally tell people to just turn it off. Um, but it is a nice thing to use if you are like really, really good at gain structure. Um, it will help you keep it, um, you know, tamed. But in general, turn it off. So you guys, I think that's about it. Uh, all in all, Jesse Buckner, great song. Um, I say embrace your Supra 112 tone as it lies. Uh, again, notice, you know, how I did a little bit of this panning on the guitars. You only have two guitar tracks. I'm going to pan all of these guitar, uh, vocals in the center here. Um, but yeah, panning gives it a little bit of space, a little bit of depth, as you've heard. Bringing those EQs up instead of down, you know, we, we just brought out a little bit more of excitement out of those tones. And so you guys, super long video as uh, <laughs> special edition number one, but I hope you got something out of it and I know you guys like watching me work, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Jesse Buckner for sending in this song to let us all take a look at and uh, poke fun at. No, I'm totally kidding. You did a great job. Performance is super solid. Recording is very good. And in general, I think you are on a very good path to becoming a great home recording engineer, Jesse. So, you guys, hope you enjoyed. Talk to you soon. Peace and love.